Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the latest buzzing social media app that's launched called Threads. It's been launched by Meta and there's so much buzz surrounding it. I think within the first 24 hours, it like 30 million users jumped onto the app. They have basically labeled it as a friendly competitor to Twitter. And I don't think there is such a thing as a friendly competitor when there is this much money involved, this much at stake. Allegedly, they are, Thread is actually being sued by Twitter, allegedly. Uh, so I don't think it's very friendly. <laughs> bit of a rundown on the new meta app thread it is an instagram based conversation text style app so it's basically a clone of twitter i'm gonna have a graph up here for you so you can actually see the difference between uh, twitter and thread and you can see what one offers over the other and as you can see they are very very similar there have been some concerns about the data that Thread is collecting it actually has the same disclosure to instagram and also twitter apparently collects similar data as well. One thing that does concern me a little bit as someone who literally just downloaded the app today, uh, please be, please keep in mind that you actually can't delete your thread without deleting your entire Instagram account. So you can deactivate your account, you can take a step back and you can pause, but if you delete your thread, your entire Instagram account is gone. So please keep that in mind. Maybe it's kind of been done like that for a reason. So people are less likely to want to delete the app, which is again, a little bit sneaky. I think Mark Zuckerberg was actually quoted saying that there should be a public conversation app with over 1 billion users on it. And apparently Twitter had the opportunity to do so, but they never took it up and in comes in thread. Now, maybe I'm just a little bit of an old fuddy-duddy, but I don't know if I really agree with that, that there should be an app that 1 billion people can communicate with each other and you can be overloaded with that much information. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later. And again, maybe it comes into the fact that I don't have Twitter and it's just not something I'm used to, but I found it very, very overwhelming. I'm gonna talk about that later. I think it's only probably been live for a few days. At this current time of filming, it's not even live in Europe yet. So it's a bit too early to tell whether or not this is going to really take off. But when we look at the track record with Meta, they don't have the best I don't know if luck's the right word, but they don't really have the best track record with starting apps from scratch. I'm going to have a list of the numerous number of apps that the meta has actually started, standalone apps, that have kind of flopped. It's a lot. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm quite certain that meta owns WhatsApp, Facebook, and Instagram. And one thing we know about Instagram is it's a little bit of a copycat. <laughs> like first it was Snapchat and the filters, F filters first took off on Snapchat. Instagram saw the success of the Snapchat filter and kind of jumped on that bandwagon. They also did this with TikTok. They saw the success of TikTok and then they pushed reels and pushed videos and video content onto their users on the platform. And now it's happening with Twitter. I remember a really good few months ago, a lot of people were up in arms with the algorithm, with the, uh, the, sh the kind of video form content and feeling like they they, they have to be pushed to make content in, in the form of videos, that pictures were dying, that their photos and their, their content that was photos was not getting pushed out and their, their accounts were kind of dying because of the algorithm and the way that the, the direction of the platform was heading. A lot of people were having some real problems with Instagram and I don't actually believe that any of the problems with Instagram really went away. I don't think they really, they said they were listening to its users and wanted to help and wanted to make Instagram better. I don't really think they did any of that, to be honest. It's just kind of funny to me. They just seem to have kind of distracted us with a new shiny toy and said, look, we can't be bothered kind of fixing this and we can't really be bothered listening to you. We can't really be bothered fixing it. But here, here's a shiny new toy. Here's a shiny new social media platform to download. Look over here. I want to run through the pros and the, the possible benefits of having a new social media app before I then delve into my list of cons. <laughs> Biggest pro for me, I think, is it's just something new and exciting, isn't it? It's something new, it's something exciting. We haven't seen a real buzz around a social media platform probably since TikTok. And look at how TikTok has taken off. Look at all the creators on TikTok who have made a name for themselves, who probably started out, you know, during the dancing in their house, um, doing funny TikTok dances. And now they 
you know, have thousands and thousands of viewers and are making a name for themselves and have legitimate businesses all thanks to TikTok and have grown a following. Um, so I think it's kind of exciting for people in the creator space to see a new platform. It's something exciting. It's, it's something to kind of look to for maybe this could be some people's big break. I think another thing is really good about it is it can actually potentially help people to grow their Instagram and to grow their Instagram accounts, especially because it's tied to Instagram. You know, there's the threads and then you can click on the profile and it, you can actually get taken to somebody's Instagram account. So if somebody has been in a slump, maybe if you're trying to grow a following and you haven't been able to, to do that and you're kind of stuck in a bit of a plateau, threads could be your answer to some really nice steady growth on your Instagram account. This one probably should have mentioned first and I did kind of mention it in my little intro to threads, but it is obviously an alternate to Twitter. Will it be as good? Will people stick around this platform for a long period of time? Only time will tell. One pro that I'm really interested to see how this plays out is it could really kind of change the influencer landscape in, in the sense of kind of how authentic influencers are and and kind of what they have to say. Because I think it's one thing to go on Instagram and post a very filtered, very airbrush, very staged photo. I think that's something that works very well on Instagram, but I don't know if it's necessarily going to work on Threads. Threads is mainly a conversation-based app, and I think it's kind of pushing more towards that authenticity, sharing thoughts, authentic feelings, thoughts, beliefs, and probably less orchestrated, airbrushed, especially airbrushed photos and videos. But I mean, who knows, this could morph into something that we don't even see coming. Like look at TikTok. TikTok started off very authentic. People just, you know, putting their phones up and dancing around in their houses. And it still does have an element of that, but there are a lot of TikTok accounts now that are very, very orchestrated, very, very airbrushed, very perfect. That's not at all how the app started out. So who knows where Threads is going to go, but at the moment it does kind of have that element of just kind of off the cuff, like saying whatever you want, not really thought out, not really heavily overthought out content, which then leads me to a con that I'm going to talk about next. Uh, in terms of the cons, I think for me, maybe the biggest one, and I don't know, let me know in the comments down below if this is just because I'm not like very familiar with this type of social media platform because I'm not really someone who uses Twitter. I've used Twitter on occasion to, to find out information, but I'm not really someone who has a Twitter account that posts or, or checks it daily, I mean, even weekly, like I'm, I'm not on Twitter. And even just like for 10 minutes that I was on threads, I found it very overwhelming. I actually posted, I'm gonna share with you, the, the first thread that I ever posted was, I'm gonna have it up on screen, Am I the only one who could see this becoming potentially exhausting? If every thought is thrown up on threads throughout the day, it may be survival of the wittiest and the mental, mentally fittest on this app. That's just how I personally feel because like I said, um, when I downloaded it, a lot of my, my the people that I follow were kind of merged over to, to threads and I just saw an overwhelming number of threads that were popping up from people and it just became really exhausting and just mentally like, oh, fatiguing because, you know, seeing every thought, I'm just worried that it's going to kind of put us even more into an oversharing society because, you know, I was seeing like multiple threads from people like minute by minute. I don't think there's even a limit on how many threads you can do a day, but you know, the, the threads I was seeing, it was like, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, like I'm drinking coffee. So many things that I'm just like, I don't need to know this. Like, I don't know if this is just me getting older. Let me know in the comments down below. But I used to be someone, and I'm the first to say, okay, I used to be very guilty of oversharing on social media and basically posting like any thought that I had, I would just whip, whip out my phone and like do like giant long stories on Instagram stories. I just, I would just basically share moment by moment a lot of time, like play by play of my day on Instagram. And the older I've gotten, I don't do that so much anymore. And it's just because I kind of don't see the value in sharing every little thought that I have throughout the day. I don't think it helps anyone. I don't think it's valuable. Before I post a lot of the time now, I ask myself, is this valuable? Is this really worth sharing? And a lot of times that thought in itself actually stops me from posting something because I just don't feel the need to post every little thought and kind of regurgitate and overshare in that sense. And I do wonder if it's going to further push this oversharing. And
and maybe I'm in the minority, let me know in the comments down below. I don't think we need to share every little thought we have, no matter how big or small it is. I don't think we need to. And I do think we do live in a society where people feel the need to give a play-by-play -play of their lives. And I know some people really enjoy that, but I'm no longer someone who, who cares to do that. And I don't really find it interesting anymore. It's not the type of content I enjoy. And I think maybe I'm in the minority in that, but I kind of like took a moment from the app and I was like, Oh my god, it's just a little bit exhausting. And I'm gonna throw up some particular threads by, I think, probably one of the biggest accounts that I've seen post is um, My Therapist Says, and they have a few kind of memes joking about this. But yeah, just a lot of a lot of threads that just kind of left me, whew, like, I'm a little bit exhausted. But that could just be a me thing. I'm very much acknowledging that. And I also think that, especially for content creators, it may feel like pressure as exciting as it may be as new as and exciting as some may think it is some people may just kind of feel that pressure to be on it that pressure to post i can definitely guarantee that very large influencers very large content creators of all different sizes um and all different genres probably feel this this pressure as well to really kind of jump on this you know jump ahead before it gets too big and too mainstream because that pressure is real, whether you believe it or not. You know, there are over, I think over 128, I googled 128 social media platforms. I didn't, I didn't even know that many existed. I mean, the main ones I can think of, I think there's about six, right? It's Facebook, it's YouTube, it's Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, and now Threads. And God, is there another one? Did I miss one? I feel like I did. IG, Facebook, Twitter, yeah, Twitter. There's just so many social media platforms. And I think somewhere along the lines, are we really going to be keeping up with all of them? Like, I mean, I barely use Facebook anymore. I barely use Snapchat anymore. Um, I God, I barely even use Instagram anymore. I hardly even post to my feed. I mean, I occasionally post stories now. I just, I don't know how people are going to keep up. I, I think it's a lot of people probably feel that pressure. Like, oh my God, this is another social media app that I have to commit my time to on a weekly, daily basis to, to share original thoughts or ideas or tidbits. And... That pressure is real for, I think, for a lot of content creators. So I do kind of sympathize with them in that sense. A part of me does wonder, is this going to take off? Is it gonna last long term? Because I mean, the last one I remember hearing about was Clubhouse. Do you remember Clubhouse? There was like a little bit of buzz around that and I downloaded that and I barely touched the damn app. Do you remember Clubhouse? I feel like that's kind of gone quiet now. Does anyone care about Clubhouse anymore? I don't really know. There's no way yet to have a bit of a chronological order to the accounts you follow, which I know some people really are bothered by that on Instagram. I mean, that's something that bothers me. So you're kind of fed certain content in a certain in a certain order, and you're also fed suggested accounts. And there's no way to really clear the accounts that you don't care about yet. There's, you just kind of get served what you get served. And I think for some people that's probably going to put them off a little bit. That's something that I felt a little bit exhausted by, just like opening the app. I'm like, what? What is this random piece of information by this person that I don't even know, I don't even care. Some obvious questions that I'd love to hear your thoughts on in the comments down below is obviously, what do you think is going to happen to Twitter? Do you think this is gonna overtake Twitter? Do you think that this is going to be the new Twitter? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And also, is this going to overtake Instagram? Like I'm really, really curious and I'm really interested to see what's going to happen to Instagram now. Are they going to complement each other really perfectly? Are people going to be on Instagram just as much as they are threads? What's going to happen? Going on to threads, I was very mentally exhausted I just from scrolling and seeing all these people's random thoughts throughout the day. I don't feel as exhausted when I scroll through Instagram. So I'm gonna be really interested to see what's gonna happen to Instagram. Uh, if it's still going to be as used, if people are going to kind of neglect it a little bit. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. And I also am really interested to see what further tweaks are going to be made. At the moment, there's no ads. That's something I'm, I'm probably expecting to see at some point. I'm also really interested to see how this just affects our overall social media use, how this affects our posting behavior in general. Because it's so interesting, I think, with Instagram, people really think out their captions, their, you know, their photos, their editing, everything is very orchestrated and very thought out. I wonder how this will affect our posting behavior because it's almost like Threads is encouraging to not have that level of orchestration. Uh, it's very much a kind of put up whatever you think, whatever you're thinking, kind of a bit more candid on the fly. Feels a little bit more authentic, but also like exhausting because I don't, I don't need to read, you know, a hundred people's thoughts in the space of three minutes. I'll be interested to see if I'm still exhausted in a few days, but honestly, I don't want to get used to being on this app because at the moment, like, I do find it very, very exhausting. Let me know in the comments down below if you can relate. Being bombarded with that many opinions and that many things from all different topics, 
I just don't think it can be very good for my attention span. I felt very fatigued stepping away from that. Like I, I read so many different things regarding so many different topics, so many different people, people I don't even know, things I don't even know about. Like I, I just so much, like I'm gonna have my feed, like just scrolling for you. And it's just a lot, right? It's a lot. And I'm just very interested to see what this further does to our attention spans, because I know TikTok's got a lot to answer for in, in regards to our attention spans. Um, but I mean, I guess if this is just like another version of Twitter, maybe people who have Twitter have been dealing with this for years. And this is just something that I'm like, oh my God, what is going on? Well, sure you guys already know, YouTube is basically my home in terms of social media realms. Like it's probably my favorite platform. I think maybe I'm just very much showing my age as a millennial by very much still appreciating long form content. I would love to hear what your chosen platform is, like what your favorite platform is. Maybe it's threads. Maybe you're just like over the moon about threads. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm gonna have another one linked right here. If you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to join me over there. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I will see you in my next one.